Hey everybody, we're back with this book study at Hosanna Fellowship, After God's Own Heart. I am so thankful for a lot of the truths that are in this book. This chapter that we're talking about, chapter 11, has really impacted my life and I can't wait to get in it into the second part of it. Today we're looking at pages 173 to 186 and that is the second part. Last week we talked about these seasons of David's life. We talked about Bethlehem and Gibeah, Gibeah and we are picking back up now in Adullam, the cave of difficulty. Let me give a couple verses here from 1 Samuel 22, 1 and 2. David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. All those who were in distress or in debt or discontented gathered around him, and he became their leader. About 400 men were with him. This is a season in David's life where he's lost favor with Saul, and he had popularity, but because of that, his enemies were angry and jealous, and now Saul and about 3,000 other men were trying to murder David. Can you imagine what David must have been feeling? Wow, he was probably confused and hurt and upset. And in the midst of that, David was trying to keep his identity rooted in the Lord. It was a time of hardship. He probably felt that God's promises were distant and faint. When would he ever be king? In that, God was teaching David not to give up in difficulty. And he wants us to know that lesson too. Not to give up in difficulty when we have our identity rooted in him. He wants us to still be okay even if we lose it all. It's a test of our heart and our character. The people... There were people that were gathering around David and they were not the best or the brightest. But yet, they became the mighty men of David. And David was learning lessons in this time, but he was also teaching them lessons. He was understanding that there are times to disagree with the people for the sake of obeying the Lord and to learn to make decisions that weren't based on the opinions of other people. He was learning God alone is his supply. And oftentimes, God tests our hearts with the exact opposite things from our prophetic calling, the plans that he has to bless us with. The test is often the exact opposite. And David was learning this, and it was preparation for the seasons to come. And the next season we look at is Hebron. And in Hebron... We want to read a couple verses out of 2 Samuel chapter 2. In the course of time, David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go up to one of the towns of Judah? He asked. And the Lord said, Go up. And David asked, Where shall I go? To Hebron, the Lord answered. This is after Saul has died. He, David has spent seven years in the wilderness, and Saul's died. And now the people want David to take all of Israel. And David says, I'm not going to make that move. I am going to inquire of the Lord and I'm going to seek after his heart. And this is what people do who are intimate with the Lord is that they go to God for big decisions. David, when he heard from the Lord to go to Hebron, that was only one twelfth of the kingdom. And just because things are seemingly coming together, it may not be the right time. And David sought the Lord to know what the right time was. It was a partial fulfillment. And David was in Hebron for seven more years. It tested him. It was probably a test of his patience. David had to continue to stay secure in his identity. It couldn't lie with just being king. And God used this whole time to work in David's life, but also to build a team, a core people who are around David, who are loyal and unified and work together. And then David's able to move into the next season, and that's Zion, where the promises are fulfilled. Twenty years after he had been anointed king, he moves into being king. David refused. He had refused to overthrow the last son of Saul, Ishbosheth. But when Ishbosheth is murdered, 
then David's anointed king over all, and we see the full release of God's promise. In our prophetic destinies, in our lives, we have a period of time before those are manifest, and we walk through these seasons. We have to stay steadfast in him and keep our focus on him. David captured Jerusalem, which is referred to as Zion in the scripture. He steps into his prophetic promises, but only after a lot of hardship and seasons of the past. One, a few things we can learn in this last season of David's life, that he had confidence when he arrived in his destiny, God's way, and in God's time. We can learn a lesson from that, that we want that confidence when we wait on God for in his ways and in, in his timing. Being king wasn't just David's idea. It was God's idea. And he, David knew that God would sustain him. People oftentimes manipulate a situation when we, they feel like they've received a prophetic word about God's calling on their lives. But then when they get to that place, they wrestle with striving to keep it and anxieties over it and then not having confidence in it. And that's not what God has for us. He wants to walk us to walk in that confidence. Another lesson we can learn from this season is God doesn't just bring a blessing in our lives for us, but it's for the sake of other people, leading other people. A third lesson, it sometimes is not what we expect. Sometimes we think there's going to be a lot of joy or it would be more exciting than it is, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes being in this season of God fulfilling prophetic promises brings more difficulty, but we have to remember our satisfaction lies in him. The fourth thing that we can learn and see in this season of David's life, it's a parallel to the king being set on the throne, Jesus. And he had to walk through seasons of obscurity and difficulty too. So just to recap, there's Bethlehem, a season of being faithful in small things and in a place of obscurity. Gibeah, what are we going to do when we experience a little bit of success and promotion? Adullam, years of testing and difficulty, difficult circumstances. And then Hebron, where there is a partial fulfillment of God's destiny. And then Zion, where there's that full fulfillment. You know, we have to walk through difficult places through these seasons. But God wants us to come up leaning on our beloved. And in this, as I share just some reflections about this chapter, I am amazed that there is a strategic plan that God has for our lives in us walking toward our prophetic destiny and those specific purposes he has for us. He has a plan, and in it we can take hope in the fact he's leading and guiding us through it. And he wants our identities to be rooted in him. And so let's pray together and ask God for insight in these, in the scripture, in these different seasons and begin to apply the lessons from these seasons to our lives. So God, we ask you for help, Lord. We ask that you would help us to learn these lessons from David and the seasons that he walked through and then begin to see those things in our lives and see how you want us to respond. We want to respond the way you want us to respond. Help us to respond in faithfulness in small things, in humility, in sticking it out even when times are difficult, and always inquiring of you of the next step. Oh Lord, we love you and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Next week, we're going to look at the next chapter, chapter 12. It'll be the first part of that chapter. We look forward to seeing you. Have a great day.